everyone, I am Freedy here, and welcome to my mix-up video series from Modern Hunter World. Today, we'll be focusing on the new and cuddly jaw blades called the Downy Quake Love, and covering the main stats of the weapon, how it feels and how it compares to other similar weapons, and then giving a mix set that work well for the weapon. Now, I must apologize for not uploading mix sets for a while, as I have been really busy on my end, and I also wanted to expand my content into Destiny 2, which is a game I took a big break on because of, well, obvious reasons. Now I've had fun with both games, now I'll share both of them onto my channel for each week to keep the content fresh for you guys. Now let's stick with the main topic and look into the new dual blade stats. The dual blades are a rarity 7 weapon with an attack value of 252 which equals to 180 war which is around average for most dual blades. It has a large blue sharpness threshold that can reach white but also means you don't have to worry about using handicraft so more room for flexibility in terms of picking your own skills to further benefit it. Next it has 0 affinity, 120 sleep which is something we're going to talk about later, no dual slots, no extra defense boost and 2 augmentation slots. Now, as you can see this weapon plays just how you expect it with its absolutely low attack value but quick effective sleep build up which these dual blades succeed well in. Now there's a few pros as well as cons that I'd like to cover with this weapon. It has one of the few best stats compared to other sleeper based dual blades coming in game with its attack value, sharpness and sleep stat beating out the Carnia 3 by a small threshold and the Tower of Dagger Thief by a very large percentage as you can see. Although the other two weapons do have an extra og slot and 20% affinity which can favour a user depending on what and how they're building their sets. Second of all, its sharpness and sleep build up make the weapon much more flexible in terms of mix setting however you like, as like I previously mentioned, handicraft won't be needed unless you don't have a substitute for it, and it can be swapped out for something like a sharp jaw instead which pairs well with the sleep element. The sleep element on the weapon is already good being at 120 which for per hit equals 12, which honestly sounds bad but it's actually great for dual blades and swords and shields that specialise as well in. Number 3, they're really cuddly to use and yet odd to use against said monsters as as you can imagine it, you're slaying a fearsome beast with a set of weapons that look like they couldn't kill a fly and yet here we are, but this is monster hunter so I expect anything at this point. Now the console weapon isn't a lot, but something I would like to see be added instead of what we got. Now it doesn't have white sharpness nor can it reach it and I believe this rule applies to other sets of sleeper dual base as well. Which is sad to see, as although on paper the weapon looks and feels stronger to use, White Shaman's could have made the weapon even more better and worthwhile to use for many players and self justice looks. Second of all, although I mentioned to sleep on the weapon is really good and is, I promise you, a good place for it, I was hoping it would have a higher sleep value to kind of make it better or more unique in its own field. This is more of a personal nitpick, as I like to use weapons that feels different to each other although similar in one to two ways, so it's not that much of a problem but something I would have been fine with if they made a small adjustment to the weapon. It really has the looks so I don't see why they couldn't enhance the stats to be something more unique and different. And number three is a limited time weapon, so if you're a big collective weapon such as these then you have now up until the end of the event which is soon to get it, as then you have to wait for it to then reshow itself again which we don't really know when that will be. Now I must say that the weapon feels good to use against monsters that have low sleep resistance as it would only take around 5 to 6 or so hits to put them to sleep and then repeat when needed which makes this great for sleep bombing strats. However in group play it's 50-50 depending on whether communication is provided as we all know using sleep based weapons in random groups don't go always as planned. Now the mix set. So I cut the pros and cons of the weapon and place them into a set that will give you a better overall experience and feel for the weapons. Some of these you may not agree on, so like always you can change and adapt it to however you feel like it. So firstly, we have critical i7 for the 30% affinity boost, critical boost 3 to increase our critical chance along with our affinity, weakness exploit 3 for 50% extra affinity upon weak points, attack boost 4 for an increase in our damage value and also giving us a 5% affinity boost. Protective Polish 1 to allow us to retain our weapon's sharpness for a set duration. Item Prolonger 3 to help extend our sharp jaw skill. And Mouth and Runner 2, which halves the amount of stamina used. Overall, this will net you a total of 290 attack, which equals 207 raw, including a power charm and talent included, 415 defense, including armor charm and talent included, 85% affinity, which is pretty good and a perfect setup for going ham against any monsters weak to the fluffy playstyle you have. 
Now, I did previously say that this weapon is not ideal for group play because of how random players can be, in terms, get carried away with attacking a monster. But the more you think about it, the set can still work well. It's just that you're going to have to forget about trying to do a sleep bomb strat, which honestly, you shouldn't really be doing unless you're in a communicated team, and just carry on hitting the monster, since it will still give your team ample time to get a few extra hits in before it snaps out of it and then carries on attacking you. But the set is quite generally perfect for covering the weakness of the weapon and still allow you to do enough damage against those that are perfectly weak to sleep build up. You'll have fun with this one if you use it in solo and against many non elder dragons, but nonetheless, it will serve you well if you're ever looking for a use for these fluffy yet powerful sleeper dual blades. So, everyone, that is the end of the video. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed the content, then do leave a like, a sub, and also do press the bell button to stay always updated when I upload as we appreciate a lot of you do. But like always, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.